Welcome back subscribers. This is Johnny Hopper and today more of like in a banter mood on my channel. I, I keep going over some stuff but this one is more on the local end. It's good news for local <laughs> motocross for our sport we love so much, motocross. So, just jumping right into it, the good news is, is we've got two organizations that combined into one. We had the Rocky Mountain Motorcycle Association here in Colorado, and we had the Sports Riders Association of Colorado, and they joined to make the Rocky Mountain Riders Association. Because we've been having a, a problem with promoters, nobody's been making enough money because not enough riders are going. There was people that wanted one or the other, they were bias to one and not the other. So 300 riders would go somewhere, 300 riders would go somewhere else. And promoters needed 350 riders to break even. So with this happening, we had a race last weekend. It was a Loretta Lynn qualifier at Thunder Valley Lakewood, which the national's coming up. It's the only national I'm planning on participating in. I'm not trying to qualify for Loretta. I'm more of a an ambassador now that I have retired from pro racing, but I'm going to go see if I can qualify and get lapped by Tomac and them. But there were 750 riders at that Loretta Lynn qualifier. But that has more to say with Loretta than potentially the merger of these two organizations. Uh, this weekend, there's a local race at Aztec, which typically gets around that 300 rider count. So I'm going to race it this weekend, so check out that video, and I will let you know how many riders we have. So that's awesome for our sport here locally in Colorado, uh, because we need to grow the sport in every state so that we can get more young riders, more pros to come up and, and race. And uh, I'm not a huge huge advocate for just making local racing your one and only. I, I think you need to do all the Ponca, Loretta, uh, World Mini, Mammoth Mountain. You need to do those big races for your sponsors and get noticed if you're doing well. Local racing is nice to stay in shape, I would say, but not so necessarily if you're trying to become a professional. But I can make another video about that later on, just with, with my experience. Uh, getting into some negative parts about racing locally. I don't know if you guys do this, but I personally think we need to get the fuck away from AMA um, for these local organizations. There's just so many classes. You know, you, you're there for one Sunday and you pay anywhere between 30 to 50 bucks per class and then 15 to 20 dollars a person to get into the gate and you get a ride four laps per moto because you have 25 motos going on at once or during the day that's that's ridiculous you have to race four or five different classes which i might add promoters want you to race four or five different classes paying X amount per class because they're going to make more money. Uh, there is an or organization here in Colorado as well that's called the Corks. It's, a, it's an off-road, Colorado off-road racing championship, something like that. Somebody's going to comment and, and give me a hard time because I don't even know that. Uh, I haven't been a real big off-road fan. I have done some GNCs and some works races in the past, and uh, I actually went to this Corks because I was tired of the local races. Uh, they wanted help me get into shape for racing professionally because a pro moto was nine minutes long. And that's, anyone can ride a motorcycle hard for nine minutes. 30 minutes, however, that's the real professionals. And you gotta train for that type of riding. And this off-road, I, I feel is great because it was, it was like a hair scramble. It was two hours long. But they didn't have no organization umbrella that they had to ad adhere to. Uh, so it was Saturdays, little bikes. Sundays were big bikes. I'd show up at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And I would race at 2, be done by 4, 
get paid, go home. I'd have be having dinner at six, seven here in, in Colorado, depending upon where the race was. And quite honestly, they paid quite a bit more. It was a dead even, 500 bucks to win, plus 100% pro payback passed, um, depending upon how many riders they had, if they had more than 20 or something. So sometimes I'd make 750 bucks. But locally, I'd have to race 250 Pro, Open Pro, and 450 Pro to make that much. And I'd have to win every moto because the local organizations would pay every moto. And quite honestly, I didn't do that very often. You know, it was one moto I'd get fifth, one moto I'd win, one moto I'd get second, one class I might go 1-1. One, one. Uh, but we were only making like $125 a moto to win, to win the class. And it, it cost quite a bit more to race because it was, you know, $40 a class for times three classes, yada, yada, yada. But what I'm getting into is you're there all day, all right? You wake up at four in the morning, you go sign up at seven, and your first moto is at 10 o'clock, uh, and then your last moto is at 2 p.m. in the afternoon or, or 4 p.m. in the afternoon. You're just, you're waiting around and you're not getting much track time. So it'd be nice if we could get away from AMA and not have 12 different 50 classes and so on and so forth. I know the age groups have to happen for Loretta Lynn, but if you've been to Loretta Lynn, like I have, you're there all freaking week long, all right? And there's a lot of waiting around. Yeah, your motos are 20 minutes. You do get three motos, but it's over a week-long race. We're talking about something just on Sunday, you know? Perhaps maybe you could have little bikes on Saturday and big bikes on Sunday and then swap it the next weekend. Or you could have... Um, I really liked here in Colorado, we used to do a morning and afternoon program where you'd have big bikes in the morning, and so they'd do all the big classes in the morning, um, and then all the little bikes in the afternoon, and it would kind of swap. I thought that worked out really well, because um, you weren't there all day long. But then, it's hard to keep everyone happy, because some people have a big bike, and then some people have a little bike too, so you're still there all day. So, there's no making everyone happy. I just think it would be a good move to get around AMA, and all their rules. Not to mention, if you didn't have AMA, you wouldn't have to pay their $60 a year for the AMA, plus $50, $60 for the organization you're racing at, whether that's, for example, here, Rocky Mountain Riders Association, or what? And then plus your, your rider fees. It's, it's a little bit, you know, it, it starts getting expensive. So that was enough banner for me today. Please uh, rebuttal me, ask me questions, tell me I'm full of shit, let me know your experiences if you live out of state, if you're overseas. I really like hearing um, stuff about racing overseas. I unfortunately was never fortunate enough to do any racing overseas, but it would be nice to hear your guys' input if you, your organizations do something that, that makes sense. But this was just a, a quick video on the local motocross here in Colorado and this two organizations coming to one should help grow this sport so that these promoters can afford to put on these races because collectively more riders are going to come to these. They're not going to have two different organizations racing on the same weekend in the same state. So uh, this is Johnny Hopper. Have fun out there and let me know what kind of videos you need to see. My skid is almost fixed, all right? So I'm gonna be making like how to build a whoop section, how to build berms, how to do a circle rut, just little things once that is up and running. So I know people have been waiting a lot for that. So that's gonna happen, all right? Just stay tuned.